Hello and welcome to Series About Film 2, Back in Action. My name's Eddie Harrison and this is the second series of our weekly reports from the Marion Bad Film Festival, where film comes first with the capital F. This week we're going to be looking at A Lady So Pretty in Pink, the first fruits of Marion Bad's original Shakespeare strand. Shakespeare, of course, is best known for his comedies and his tragedies. But up until now, he's not been known as the author of teen movies. This is, however, until the unprecedented discovery of a first folio of teen movies written by Shakespeare, which was found in the attic of John Hughes's Glendale home. In the film, Molly Ringwald plays Eleonor, a student at the Verona High School. She travels with her handmaiden, Andrea, to the Veronese market, hoping to meet her suitor, Blandero, played by Andrew McCarthy. However, when they arrive there, they are disturbed by a commotion, played by Lloyd Cole. A travelling entertainer, Ducky Dale, arrives but is attacked by a mob and leaves pursued by a psychedelic fur, played by Richard Burtler. This is a strong film with a spectacular soundtrack featuring Lixitins, Transvision Vamp, Teenage Fan Club, HRH Queen Victoria, and also with several tracks taken from David Soul's Carnival of Soul album. Let's take a look. Remarkable stuff. Marion Bad's original Shakespeare strand continues with John Hughes's 1984 film, The Sausage King of Padua. In this film, Matthew Broderick plays Duke Ferris Bueller. He takes a day off from preparing for work with the Paduan Senate in order to take time off with his friend Cameronicus, played by Alan Rock, and his betrothed Miranda, played by Mia Sara. When they arrive at the Paduan Senate, Bueller plays a joke on the Emperor, played by Geoffrey Jones. In this, he pretends to be Abe Froman, the Sausage King of Padua. But when the real Abe Froman, played by Christopher Walken, turns up, Bueller has to extract himself from a comical situation. Perhaps his cooking old pot walloping aunt, played by Anne Margaret, will have the answers. Let's take a look. Hello and welcome back to Series About Film 2, Back in Action, and our weekly reports from the Marion Bad Film Festival. Next up, we've got Slovenian melodrama with Emil Costa Rica's Everything But the Kitchen Sink. Costa Rica's annual return to form sees him meld the usual scraps of gypsy life, war, Scientology, sex, nationalism, Eskimo folklore, serial packets, glitter, philosophy and ruminative monologues into a seamless patchwork of inconsequential scenes and scrambled dialogue. A mute farmer, Joseph Fine's trenchant, discovers that a well on his property is the gateway to a mythical police state. Should he board it up or travel through to become a tourist in communist Prague and romance the lovely Svetlana, played by Natasha McClone? Indecisive, he elects to throw a huge gypsy feast, inviting friends, family and accountants. But as the smell of roast pork begins to fade away, the farmer must ask himself, who will tend the fields next year? Fabulous cinematography from Vittorio Pompatus and a deep house score from John Cale. Let's take a look. Powerful stuff there. One of the entries in this year's Marion Bad Film Festival. Well now we're actually very excitingly going to go live over to our roving reporter Paul Whitelaw who's actually in the Marion Bad Hotel right now and soaking up the atmosphere. So Paul, I don't know if you can hear me right now. Paul, can you hear me? Just about Freddie, so I didn't quite catch that. Um, it is a bit manic here, as you can tell, as always, here at the 273rd annual Marambad Film Festival. Um, quite difficult to make out what you're saying. Uh, it's all a bit mental. I've only been here a few hours, but already I've seen some amazing films and been ignored by stars such as Jennifer Lopez, Jeff Goldblum, Steve Gut Gutenberg, and the entire cast of Dude, Where's My Ear? Uh, director Quentin Tarantino's surprising foray into the teen movie idiom. I'm surprised to hear Steve Gothenburg's there. I mean, I felt that Steve Gothenburg took away a lot of the press from him. Is, is Gothenburg out there in force? The Gutenberg posse is here in force yeah, with quite, uh, quite a gung-ho campaign this year. Um, a lot of controversy. Um, he's r rather undermining the campaign by Bubba Smith, who played Hightower from the hit series, who's here showing his own personal movie about the uh, struggle of, uh, of his uh, black ancestors through the, uh, through the years. A very worthy film, and I think Gutenberg's uh, gung-ho tactics are really undermining that campaign. 
Okay, Paul, so can you tell us a little bit about some of, some of the other movies there? I know that Mike Lee's Vera Duckworth, the story of a woman who can't bear to tell a family that she's actually a character from Coronation Street. I gathered that screening, but what are the other hot movies this year? Uh, the hot movies, Teddy, are um, definitely uh, George A. Romero's um, controversial remake of the uh, 80s classic Breakdance 2, Electric Boogaloo. Uh, his reimagining of that film, he's titled How the Undead Got Their uh, Groove Back, uh, causing a lot of waves here uh, amongst the living and the dead. And hopefully we'll be having a chat with uh, the star of that film, Yaz, a little bit later on. Thank you very much, Paul, for that broadcast from the Marienbad Film Festival. Uh, thanks. Next up, we're going to be looking at Wes Craven's I Knew What You Did Last Year in Marienbad, which has stormed... That went really well, Eddie. Thanks. That was great. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. Which has stormed the festival. But next, we're going to have a look at Kangaroo Jack versus The Weeping Camel. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for in this week's edition of Series About Films 2, Back in Action. Thanks to Glasgow School of Art and to the Digital Design Studio and also to the Blue Room in Edinburgh for providing the films. If you think you could make a better film than some of the ones that you've seen in tonight's programme, then why not send a tape to me, Eddie Harrison, at Series About Film, Thistle TV, 17, Boundary Avenue, New House Industrial Estate, ML1 5RX. And contact us at seriesaboutfilms at thistletv.com or visit the website www.thistletv.com slash seriesaboutfilms. Thanks to the Digital Design Studio in Glasgow and to the Blue Room in Edinburgh for providing the films. That's all we've got time for tonight at Serious About Films, the reports from the Marion Bad Film Festival. My name's Eddie Harrison. Good night. <laughs> it wouldn't be so bad if I couldn't see what was going on in the big screen in front of me. <laughs> Next up, Slovenian Mer... Kick. Hello, and welcome back to Serious About Two. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Great Soprendo has just arrived as well. Um, Arts Rivals with Charlie Caroli. Hopefully they won't be uh, re... Uh, re um, I, <laughs> <laughs> I completely don't know what I was talking about there. Thistle TV, 17, Roundtree House, ML1, 5... Have at <laughs> what did I say? 17 Roundtree House. Send your tapes to... Serious about films, Thistle TV, 17 Round Tree House, f it. <laughs> right, tell me in again. Right, just. Rock as well. What? You forgot to rock. I forgot to rock. Well, no, the rocking's going to come in gradually. Oh, right. <laughs> but I also forgot to say anything, so that was obviously a mistake. <laughs> Welcome to Series About Film 2, Back in Action. My name is Eddie Harrison, and I'm here with another of my regular updates from the Marienbad Film Festival, where film comes first with a capital F. First up this week, the painterly biopic in Gilles Van Jules' film about the great artist Monet, Show Me the Monet. Adapted from a book by Gustav Van Trappfastner, Gilles Van Jules' sumptuous biopic details the artist at work, creating his masterpiece, The Girl of the Pearl Necklace, a piece which now hangs in The Hague in Amsterdam. Cuba Gooding Jr. grew a beard and also cut off his own ear in order to play the painter. In the film, we see him and Colin Firth as Van Gogh as they head off to a brothel stroke massage parlour in Ghent for a weekend playing shinty. However, they are distracted by the arrival of a beautiful milkmaid, played by Scarlett Johansson. 
Johansson is graceful as ever, even when riding on a nuclear-powered space hopper. Let's take a look. That's just about all we've got time for in part one of the series about film two, Back in Action. Join me again after this break. Hello and welcome back to Marion Bad. Next up, we've got a controversial musical from Sir Alan Parker, O Osama. Featuring songs by Andrew Lloyd Webber and also by Fran Healy from Travis, the film stars RuPaul as the likable Afghan dictator and mass murderer. Notable highlights include a Busby Barkley style line of high kicking mullahs singing Don't Cry For Me Condoleezza, and also a reggae dub trip hop version of W Be Good To Me. Let's take a look. Until next week, good night. Join me again after this break. Man, how fucking professional was that? <laughs> oh, one take, and then making it look easy. This controversial picture of Osama Bin Laden, played by RuPaul, can't remember any of the rest of my links, so I'm just going to stop. The girl with the pearl necklace, which now hangs in Amsterdam. In, in <coughs> Kit, Kit, Kit. In this film, Mooney is played by Jerry Maguire style star. <coughs> Kit, played by Jerry Maguire style. <coughs> Adapted from a book. Man, can we make a whole show out of our takes? <laughs>
Next up from the Murray and Bad Film Festival, we've got a live report. Uh, our reporter Brian Sylvester is actually there in Murray and Bad reporting on mass protest today by the locals um, in protest against what appears to be a longer working day. Um, Brian, I don't know if you can hear me properly. I know that there's a lot of noise uh, there in Marion Bad, but can you fill us in a little bit? What exactly are people protesting about and what, what is their grievance? Um, it's, it's about quarter past seven here. Um, the people of Marion Bad, as you may have gathered, are very, very, very angry about the film festival. They're being asked to work 27 hour weeks and uh, that means that for a lot of them, that means going to work um, I'm hours sorry, I'm going to have to interrupt to you just over the noise of the crowd there because it is very, very noisy indeed. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, I know, understand Jennifer Lopez and Kate Blanchett were there earlier on today. Uh, can you describe exactly what they were wearing? I, I don't know if you can hear me above this noise, but uh, they, 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 there's about 70,000 tonnes of aluminium being used. There's a huge amount of plastic sheeting and um, there's been probably enough canopies to feed the, the crew um, of a submarine. Area, it's, it's very, very, very difficult to pick out what you're saying here. Um, could you describe to us, uh, you know, what, what are the films that are hot this year at Marion Bad? Wh which are the, what's, what's the buzz on the street? What's the buzz on the street? Um, it's been fairly hot and drizzly here. Uh, bromided Victorian dowagers have been standing by, um, and there were rumours that uh, Sean Bean would be promoting his autobiography, I Must Have Been Too. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's, it's very, very, very difficult to make you out. I mean, can you, can you tell us just f f what do you think the likely outcome of this kind of power struggle in Marion Bad is going to be? Power struggle in Marion Bad is going to be. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, mean, I, c I can't hear you above the noise of this crowd. Uh, the, it looks like there's a very ugly scene at Marion Bad right now, so obviously I'm going to have to make a run for it. So I'm, I'm very, very sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. We seem to have lost uh, contact with Marion Bad. Um, hopefully, we'll be back after this break. Next up from Marion Bad, we've got a Scottish poetry biopic, a film about the great Scottish poet James Gant, entitled A Brigadoon Too Far. Eh, Scotland, my highland home, rolling in the heather with the haggis at my feet. My granny knitting soup by the light of a table lamp made from a German soldier killed by my grandfather. What for you'll no go by you, my sweet haggis? James Gant wrote these words more than 400 years ago. But his voice can still be heard today. Some say by holding an empty can of tenant superlager up to your ear while lying on Salcote's beach. Yet, while modern, Gant was very much a man of his time, which was usually about half past eleven on a Saturday night. James Gant was only six years old when his family strapped a submachine gun on his back and sent him out to fight in World War I. By the time he was 17, James Gant had been fighting furiously for eight years and was greatly relieved when the war itself actually began. Caught up in the revolutionary fervour, Gant found himself in George Square, throwing cobblestones at approaching government tanks. The police moved quickly amongst the agitators, mentioning to the public that there was a Rangers Celtic match on that afternoon and the crowd quickly dispersed, leaving only Partick Thistle supporters, who were quickly rounded up by police in dawn raids the next day. Let's take a look at Gant's masterwork. As I said, that's all we have time for this week. Thanks for watching, and good night. Oh, Granny, my highland hame, rolling in the heather. Can't remember it, can't remember it. It's only like a line long. Right, sorry, 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 sorry. My granny knitting soup. All oh, right, okay, sorry. Rolling in the heather with the haggis at my feet. My granny nipping soup, nipping soup. Fuck, 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 fuck. I know there's been also protests as well. Can you fill us in a little bit about what's going Headline on? Is the people of Marion Bad are not happy about this film festival and I gather there has been some kind of a protest. Can you fill us in about what's going on? I think we've got to do that again. Um, it's, it's about quarter past seven here. <laughs> so surreal. <laughs>See the people of my own newspaper, there's no idea of what I do when I come in. It's like, you know, I just say I'm not coming in on Wednesday. And they've no idea, they think I'm away doing some uh, If uh, only they could see me.
보고 있었네 이렇게 다. 
Hello, and welcome to series about film two, Back in Action. My name's Eddie Harrison, and this is another in our weekly reports from the Marion Bad Film Festival, where film comes first with a capital F. First up this week, internet detective agency drama in Prepay My Lovely. From the author of The Serva Only Reads Twice, it features Keanu Reeves as Inspector Google of the Sûreté. When a murder in the Quartic Express dazzles the French nation, Inspector Google is called in and brings his considerable search engines to bear in finding the killer. To create their Hunter S. Thompson-esque mood of the piece, more than 4,000 animators work together in order to create some kind of expression on Keanu Reeves' face. It's a performance of many moods. Let's take a look at both of them now. Next up on Serious About Film, we've got a live report from the Marion Bad Film Festival, where Paul Whitelaw is in the lobby of the Marion Bad Hotel. Paul, uh, good to see you there. Can you tell us, first of all, I, I gather that it's been quite heavy rain overnight, and that may have dampened the spirits of some of the people at the film festival. Yes, um, sodden is perhaps the best way to describe the Marion Bad Film Festival this year, Eddie. Uh, but as you say, those torrential uh, rainfalls uh, haven't actually dampened the spirits of the festival goers this year, and all the stars have uh, turned out in force, uh, braving the weather. In fact, just moments before we came on air, uh, Barry Manilow, uh, bedraggled, beaten, um, fell through the doors of this uh, very foyer onto to the floor with a triumphant roar of I made it through the rain. Uh, Manolo is now recuperating in a cupboard but his management do inform me that he will be playing a three hour set in the hotel ballroom this afternoon whether anybody wants him to or not. I'm sure that, I'm sure that will reassure the people of Marion Bad. Um, also I gather there's been quite a few kind of unusual stars coming in today. Who have you spotted when you've been out in your travels? Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, just this afternoon, I bumped into actor John Lithgow, uh, now renamed uh, John Lynn Lithgow, after being uh, given the keys to that beautiful uh, Scottish village just this weekend. Uh, he said to me, I have no idea where I've just been, but man, do those cats hold a party. <laughs> Uh, I also uh, bumped into uh, a young man everyone's talking about here at Marion Bad. That is funny man Fred Macaulay Culkin, who is the uh, latest and definitely most annoying member of the interminable Culkin clan. And I also gather that uh, Yul Brynner, uh, his, his po posthumously, his autobiography has been published called Brynner Takes It All. Are there any other kind of sensations that are sweeping Marion Bad at the moment? Yes, well, actor Rob Lowe was in town. Um, he's promoting his new uh, cable game show, How Low Can You Go?, which has proved to be a real eye-opener uh, here at Marion Bad. Uh, we've also had some other funny people whose names I can't remember. OK, Paul, uh, thank you very much for that report. What, what are you going to do? Are you going to go and see some films now or are there parties ahead for you? I'm going to lie down in a box. Paul Whitelaw at the Marion Bad Film Festival. He was talking there about Yul Brynner's Brynner Takes It All. Let's take a look at that. Welcome back to Series About Film 2, Back in Action, and our weekly report from the Marion Bad Film Festival. Next up, a sci-fi epic, Alien vs Predator 451. Not quite the free-for-all one might have expected, Michael Moore proves his even-handedness as executive producer of this politically aware horror fest. Standing at podium-mounted lecterns in front of a live studio audience is much gnashing of steel teeth and rattling of futuristic sabres as the alien and the predator debate a series of audience-prompted questions, including healthcare, education and interplanetary dominance. There is an immediate frisson as the alien takes personal offence about a question of stem cell research, followed by a heated exchange about the predator's possible draft evasion during the galactic wars of Ursa Minor. Next week, the alien takes on popular DJ Jason Nevins, while the alien faces a potentially difficult away tie against Hong Kong Fui, filmed in Ang Lee's crouching dog, Stripey Cat. Let's take a look. Until next week, good night. First up this week, we've got internet detective agency drama in Prepay My Lovely. Can't remember the rest of the link. Right, okay, off to flying start. Yeah, right, okay, okay. <laughs> apart from that, it was going quite well, wasn't it? It was going really, really well, apart from not remembering what I was going to say. Asking some difficult questions of Jeeves the butler. Oh, so close to nearly finishing that one, and then it all just fell away. On the count of three, I'll count to three. One, two, three, go. 
<laughs> David, come on, I don't want to have to take you outside, but you're completely out of sync. <laughs> Next up, from Mary in bed. <laughs> Mary in bed. <laughs> Next up, from Mary in bed. <laughs> right, sorry, please count me in again. Hello, and welcome to Series About Film 2, Back in Action. My name is Eddie Harrison, and it's another in our weekly reports from the Marion Bad Film Festival, where film comes first, with a capital F. First up this week, we've got Iranian ramblings in The Cherry Tree and The Balloon. Director Abu Chris Packett has always been one of Iranian cinema's most reclusive characters, and has only made two films in 40 years. But his latest, The Cherry Tree and the Balloon, is easily his most accessible since his nine-hour study of a Kabaddi champion, Goshi Hoshi Bama Marama Lama Ding Dong. The first Iranian film to be filmed entirely within Cape Canaveral, this is a film that picks out life's smaller moments. The fall of a leaf, the sound of a train in the distance, and also the hatching of a hundred gigantic moth-like creatures which attack Tel Aviv in a dramatic finale scored by David Gray. Let's take a look. Tall das land. De VW fährt prima aus das land. In Karl Dreher's Days of Fog and Thunder. At un große schwarzen Spinner. We saw the nicht. Es ist ein wunderschöner Sommertag. Und die schöne Sein. Es ist wohl ein Insekten. Der VW fährt prima aus das Land. Und ich habe ein großes schwarzes Spinne. Wir sollen nicht datan. Once creating a pea super for his film Misting You, es ist wohl in Sekten. Es ist ein wunderschöner Sommertag und die schöne Seint in einem wolkenlosen Himmel. Phileas Fogg and also the fog in the town. Und der VW fährt prima aus das Land. Ich habe ein große schwarze Spinne. Several leopards apparently got very badly banged about. Tall das Land. Lastly tonight on series about film two, back in action, we've got cartoon live action mayhem with the Hair Bear Bunch in Wonderland. Casting big Hollywood stars as animated characters has proved popular, and this one features Owen Wilson, Randy Quaid, and Bill Murray as the likeable inhabitants of Cave No. 9 in the Wonderland Zoo. Alan Rickman also has a small cameo role as Mr. Peevely. It's the first in a new hanna Bombera franchise that includes Elmore Leonard's Inch High Private Eye with Harvey Keitel, Steven Spielberg's Jabberjaw, and Bill Murray as Deputy Dog in Wes Anderson's typically bittersweet reimagining of the classic cartoon. With the new Wacky Races film about to come out and Nicole Kidman squaring up as Penelope Pitstop, and with Vin Diesel set to play Peter Perfect of the Perfect Mobile, it looks like this is a franchise that will run and run. Let's take a look. Sadly, that's all we've got time for on the final episode of Series About Film 2, Back in Action. My name's been Eddie Harrison, and this has been my weekly report from the... Uh, sorry, Eddie, sorry to interrupt. A uh, bit of a surprise for Eddie and the uh, ladies and gentlemen at home. Um, Eddie, for all your work in Marion Bad over the last few weeks, uh, the, uh, the director of Marion Bad and myself would like to present to you this, the prestigious annual Thin Goats Award. Eddie Harrison for magnificent work. 
Um, thank you. Thank you very, very much indeed. Um, I, I would just like to say a, a few words about receiving an award that I've dreamt of all of my life. Um, this has been probably the proudest moment, and I, I um, do want it. Um, we'd also, uh, the directors and I would like to present you with this hand-painted <laughs> uh, print, which depicts, of course, the famous town centre in the of Marion Bad. <laughs> Uh, oh, please that's, take a that's absolutely that's absolutely wonderful. That's Thank all. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, obviously, it wasn't all about me. Um, I can't help feeling very grateful to the team of people who worked with me to create these broadcasts. To you know, and uh, Eddie, sorry, it's another one. This one says from oh, Bill. Right. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you again. Um, but most of all, I'd like to thank myself. I've been magnificent. I've stood by myself all the way through, even when I didn't believe that I could do this program. I was always there believing that I actually could. And I just want to say thank you most of all to most I, I want to say thank you most of all to myself and to everyone at Thistle TV for creating this programme. Thank you from the Marion Bad Film Festival. It's been a joy, a pleasure, and I beg you. Next up this week in series about film, we've got German expressionist NASCAR action and Carl Dreher's Days of Fog and Thunder. So that bit's great, that bit's really, really good. I just can't remember anything else I'm going to do after that. The Long Quiet German. The Long Quiet German. <laughs> the Long Quiet Giant of German Expressionism is back, this time united with co-star Tom Cruise. For another tale of something or other, I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't remember. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Hello and welcome to series about film two, back in action with me, Eddie Harrison. It's the first. <laughs> it's not the first day anything. It's the last. It's actually the last, but it seemed like the first briefly to me, and I, sorry for saying that. I'll try that again. Did they say this wouldn't take long, Paul? Yeah. Yeah, Were you not happy with that? No. Nope. This just as well, just as well. Then it all went to its surface, isn't it? <laughs>